Okay, so good evening and welcome to today's session. I'm sharing, it's Risha. Welcome to this week's session. So we're going to be do, uh, doing normal probabilities. Uh, we're going to touch base in terms of introducing you to the concepts of normal probability, as well as how we calculate uh, the standardized values. And then we move into how we find the probability of a normal distribution. And we will do a little bit of activities or exercises. Oh, we're going to also look at the table. So remember, we're going to be using table EG, which is cumulative standardized normal distribution table. Okay, so by the, you know, I didn't change my slides, but by the end of the session today, you should be able to know the basic concepts of normal distribution. You should be able to compute your probability from a normal distribution, finding the probability of a standardized value less than or a standardized value greater than a value, or if the value lies between, the standardized value lies between two values. And we should be able to use the formulas or, and also use the table to find the probabilities. The formulas we're going to need to know how to calculate the Z score, which is the standardized value. And then the tables is what we're going to use to find the probabilities. So unlike with Poisson and binomial, where we find the probabilities uh, either by using a formula or by using a table, with normal distribution, we're only going to find the probability by using the table. We use the Z to the, the, the formula to calculate the Z score. Okay, and then we will look at some of the activities that we can do together. So, um, since we're talking about normal distribution, it comes from a, a, a continuous process where your variable would have been a quantitative numeric variable, which will be continuous in nature. So since it comes from a continuous variable, which uh, that, vari that variable can take any, any number in the continuum, right? So, but it is a number that can also not be counted. So it cannot be counted because if it's counted, then it becomes discrete. And you know the discrete, we deal with discrete in binomial as well as in Poisson. So with normal distribution, your values would be continuous because they are measured values, such as the thickness of an item. You cannot look at an item and count how thick that is. So you'll have to take a measuring tape and measure that. The temperature, you cannot look at someone or look at the weather and say, oh, today the temperature is 26 degrees. You need to take a thermometer and measure the temperature. So it's a value that comes from a measuring process. Uh, <clears throat> this can potentially take any value depending on the ability to precisely and accurately measure that. And remember also because with continuous variable, it can take decimals. So as long as you are able to take something and measure that and get the unit out of it, that would form part of the um, normal distribution. Okay, so <clears throat> in terms of normal distribution, we touched on the topic when we were dealing with uh, histo uh, a histogram or when we were dealing with how we summarize and view uh, data uh, for numerical data. And we, we did a histogram and we look at the distribution of the data. And part of the distribution of the data, we spoke about the data being symmetric or skewed and all that. All those form part of uh, finding out whether your data is normally distributed because when your data is symmetrical, then we say it is normally distributed because the mean and the median and the mode are actually the same. 
But here I'm just showing you an illustration of different types of normal distribute, normally distributed data. So you can have, oh, sorry, if I move to the next one, you can have this purple one where you can see that it's flat and you can have this blue, uh, the blue one, which is almost normal, uh, the normal, normal curve that we use normally, the normal, the normally normal curve that we use, uh, or the green one where it is torn. All this can also be normally distributed because it also, it only depends on the population parameters, whether we move or shift the value of your mean or your standard deviation, if we increase it or decrease it, it will determine how your normal distribution curve looks like. So, for example, in a way, if we shift or if we change the value of your mean, if we decrease it, it will shift to the left. If we increase it, it will shift to the right. So, depending, so when the the value of your mean changes, your normal distribution will move either to the left or to the right. When it comes to the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, when we change the value of your standard deviation, whether we increase or decrease, it changes the shape of the graph in terms of the spread, whether it becomes flatter or it becomes taller. So, <clears throat> The bigger the standard deviation, the flatter your curve will be. The smaller your standard deviation, the taller your uh, normal distribution curve will be. So if we look at the previous one, as a one standard deviation, a two standard deviation, and a three standard deviation, because the standard deviation the smaller on the first one, and it's bigger on the second one, and on the third one, it's um, uh, uh, it's even bigger because it's three standard deviation. So that's how you will be able to identify some of the properties of a normal distribution, especially with regards to the shape, how the mean and the standard deviation influences the shape of your graph. Okay, so with normal distribution, because we deal with the raw data, which is the uh, the measures that we have collected in order for us to convert sometimes you work with this data and it does not conform to being a normal distributed data but because we need to make decisions out of it we need to make sure that we transform that raw data into a normal distribution or into a normally distributed value that we can use to make a decision out of it. So when your data is not normally distributed, so we transform it. And the method that we use to transform that data is what we call a standardized normal distribution, which is the Z score. Usually we call it the Z score or the Z value or the Z or the standardized normal distribution value, but it will al always be a Z. So in a way we take, where am I? or we take your, your, your actual value, we transform it into the Z-score. And how we do that, remember now, oh, I, I just moved too quickly. We do that in order for us to standardize your value of your mean and your standard deviation. So for your normally distributed value, it has to have, a mean of zero, or we say your normally distributed, uh, your norm, your your normally distributed uh, values would have the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. That is a normal distribution. So it's normally distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. <laughs> I already spoke about this. I said, we mentioned that uh, for a, uh, a distribution to be normally distributed, we say the mean and the median, uh, as well as the mode will be equal, and it will take a belly shape calf. Where the mean is your uh, measure of central location and your standard deviation is your measure of uh, spread, 
or your measure of variation. So how do we transfer or tra translate the data or transform the X observation into a normally distributed value? We do that by using the z-score and the formula would be your X observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Therefore, it means in the statement they will give you what the standard deviation will be or the population standard deviation is. They will also give you the population mean. All what you need to do is subtract the mean from uh, subtract the mean from your X observation, divide that answer by the standard deviation. And this Z score will be distributed or always distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. That is the property of a normal distribution. Even though your mean or the population mean might be 330 and your standard deviation might be 50, but in order for us to convert that 350 and the standard deviation to convert your X observation of 250 to becoming a normally distributed so that it has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one, we use the Z score to transform that. Okay, how we do that? So let's look at this example. If X is distributed normally with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 50, find the value of Z or the Z score where X is equals to 200. So we go into identify what we given from the statement. We are given the mean of 100, the standard deviation of 50, <clears throat> and our X is 200. Then we go into substitute into the formula. Our X is 200. Our mean population mean is 100. Our population standard deviation is 50 and we substitute and we calculate and we find that the Z score is 2.0. Now, I'm going to ask you that when you calculate and you get to the answer, always leave your answers to two decimals. In, in my example, I'm not leaving it into two decimals, but always remember to leave your answer two decimals. The two decimal means two zeros after a comma. So you must make sure there are two numbers after the comma. So you will also have to make sure that you round off correctly as you leave the two decimals. When the value is greater than five to the right of where you want to round off to, you need to add one. If it's less, you leave it as is. You need to be able to know how to round off. So by calculating the z-score, we can say, or we can interpret this by saying that the x of 200 is two standard deviation or two increments of 50 units above the mean of 100. You do not have to learn how to interpret, but you just need to learn how to calculate the value of the z. Okay, so when it comes to... Um, finding the probability. You need to have calculated your Z. If you haven't calculated your Z, they would have given you the Z value. So you need to be able to know how to use that Z value, whether calculated or given, to make a decision or to go and find the probability. So there are three ways that you can be asked about the probability of a normal distribution. If they ask you, and always remember, before I even get to defining what the probability, uh, how do we get there? The probability on the normal distribution, uh, di uh, under the normal distribution, the probability is the area underneath the curve. So it means all the values that are underneath this belly curve are what we call probabilities. So and we know that the sum of all probabilities is equals to one. So the other thing that you also need to be aware of, especially when you look at normally distributed curves, is that your value of your curve, your belly curves, will never touch your X observations or your X axis, because if it touches the X axis, then that probability will probably be equals to zero because it will be the probability at the constant. So. We use these probabilities to calculate the cumulative probability, but not a probability at a point. 
we're calculating always. You must always remember that, that we're calculating cumulative probabilities, not a probability at a point. So since we're calculating cumulative probabilities and we know that the area underneath the curve is what we need to be calculating when we calculate probability or find the probability, we need to remember the following. Even with the normal distribution, the sign, the mathematical sign is very important because it guides you or tells you how you're going to find that probability from the table. So here, you calculate your Z or you are given the Z. You're going to use that Z value that you calculated, which is two decimal value. You're going to find the value on the table and that will be the area underneath the calf. But how do we know where to find that area underneath the calf? The sign is very important. If you have to find the probability that the Z value is less than a value, or the Z score is less than a value A, and if value A is here, so therefore it means we are looking for all these probabilities underneath the curve right? Because these are all the probabilities. The shaded area, which might it might not be visible for you, I just realized that on this one, the area is this that we are referring to. So that is the area underneath the curve because it's less than, less than the value of A. That is our A. So in order for us to find that value on the table, we are just going to go on the table and find that value. Later on, I'm going to explain to you because the table has two sides, but we're gonna get to that. So if I need to find the probability that Z is less than a value, I'm going to use the table value and find, regardless of whether I'm on the negative side or the positive side of the table. The value I find on the table, that is my answer, or less than. Always remember that. If I need to find the probability of a greater than, then I need to subtract that probability from one. Why? Because, like I said previously with the probability of a less than, you need to be aware that, regardless of the positive or the negative, the Z table contains all probabilities of a less than. So if the Z table contains all the probability of a less than, therefore it means if the question asks you to find the probability of a greater than, then you need to find the complement of that, which is one minus the probability of a less than value that is on the table. So when you want to find the probability of Z greater than a value, you're going to say one minus the value that is on the table. Whether the value of A is negative or positive, irregardless, you are going to say one minus. So for this psi, it's going to always be one minus the value from the table. What about when it's between? So since it is between, the other thing I forgot to mention is that if I'm if I know that the probability on the table is the sum of all the probabilities is equals to one. Therefore, if I split this um, normal distribution into half, I'm going to use this one here. If I split this halfway, this side will have 0, 0,5 values and this half will have 0, 0,5 values because the sum of both probabilities should be equals to one. Now, coming back to the between, when you have to calculate the probability where it lies between two values, there is a smaller value and a bigger value. Always remember that. Whether a value, one value is negative and the other one is positive or both of them are positive or, or both of them are negative, regardless, there is the smallest value and the biggest value. So, Let's assume that A is our smallest value and B is our biggest value. So if Z lies between these two values, 
in order for us to find the probability, what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the table and find first the value of a bigger value, which is the probability of B. So we're going to find the value of B first on the table, and we're going to subtract the value of A from the table. I hope you will remember that. For the between, we're first going to find the value of B, subtract the value of A, and that will give us the probability of between. Okay, I think I've explained a lot. Let's get to the table that I've been referring to. Table, table, table. The table, which is your cumulative standardized normal distribution table. If you are using a prescribed book, please be very careful because you will find that there is also a standardized normal distribution table. And that is the probability at the point. It only has the positive values there. It does not have two sides. You need to read the table carefully and use the one that says cumulative standardized normal distribution. If you are using the past exam paper, it's table E2. The normal distribution table has two sides, has the positive side and the negative side. They all contain the probability of a Z less than a value. If you look at this, here is our Z, the shaded area you can see from the negative side, because if this side is negative, this side is positive. On the negative side, that is the value from the negative side. On the positive side, if we start the table from the positive side, these are the values from the positive side. And if you look at the probability where Z is 0, 0, it will be 0, 0, 0,05. And when you go to the negative side and you look for negative 0, 0, you will find 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,5. Because this and that should give you the same. Now, we need to learn how to read this table, the negative and the positive side, because this is the probability of a less than. All the values that we see here are probability of a less than. If you don't understand how to read the table right now, after this session, you need to practice because the next session and the next session and the next session, we're still going to be looking at the same table. When we're doing sampling distribution, when we're doing hypothesis testing, when we uh, looking at confidence interval, we are going to be looking at the same table. So you must make sure that you know and understand how to read this table. Okay, let's get to let's get down to it. Since I've explained a lot. Let's find the normal probabilities. Let X represent the time it takes in seconds to download an image file from the internet. Suppose X is normal with the mean is mute. Please make sure that you are muted unless if you have a question. Okay, thank you. So let X represent the time it takes to download an image from the internet. Suppose X is normal with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of five. Find the probability that X is less than 18.6. And to do that, it means we're going to have to calculate the value of Z. And from here, we know what our mean is. We have our standard deviation and we have our X value always given in the question. So our formula X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Our X is what is in the question. 18.6 minus the mean of 18.0. You can also include zero if you want. Divide by 5,0. I'm going to remove this because I do have the So 
we, we're going to use the formula and we substitute the values and then we get the answer. So our Z is 0, 0,12. That is our Z score. If they ask you to calculate the Z value, easy. You just substitute into the formula and calculate your Z score. If they ask you to find the probability, because they say find the probability that X is less than. So in order for us to find the probability of a less than, then we need to go to the table. Because we know now that we need to find the probability of Z less than 0, 0,12, because that's what we calculated. We go to the table. On the positive side, because 0, 0,12 is positive, so we're going to go to the positive side on the table. We're going to look for 0, 0,1 on the left-hand side, and then we're going to look at the last digit, which is 2, at the top. At the top, all the values are 0, 0,0, like will be comma 0, 0, comma zero one. So at the top, we only interested in the last digit. And uh, on the right, oh sorry, on the left, we are interested in the value before the comma and the value after the comma. That's how you read the normal distribution table. So let's look for zero comma one and two, and the, we find that that probability is zero comma five four seven eight. Because it will be this portion, this smaller portion there, plus the 50% makes up. So the, 50, the, the smaller portion here is just the 0 0.0478. But in a way, we just say we're looking for the probability of Z less than 0, 0.12, and that will be 0, 0.5478. That is the probability of a less than. Now, if we need to find the probability of a greater than, same information, but now the sign says greater than. In order for us to find the probability of a greater than, we did calculate this. I'm not going to calculate Z again. We did calculate Z and we found that Z was 0, 0,12. So our Z is greater than 0, 0,12. From our unit, remember our not standardized units. So our unit was X of greater than 18.6. When we standardized this 18.6, we find that it is 0, 0,12. To find the probability that Z is greater than 0, 0,12, remember it's greater than. So we're going to say one minus the value we find on the table. So we're going to say one minus the value we're going to find on the table, and remember on the table, we only have the less than values. Now, you will ask me later and say, why am I using less than and now I'm using less than or equal? Irregardless, it doesn't matter. We're doing a cumulative and, 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 and. For the purpose of you understanding the concepts and you understanding the work, we're going to treat both of them for normal distribution as one. So you can use them interchangeably because we're looking at the cumulative probabilities. So even though they mean two different things in terms of mathematical sign. So this one says it includes 0, 0,12. The other one says it doesn't include 0, 0,12 and, and vice versa. But in a way, we're going to just interchange them in this session. So one minus the probability of a less than because the less than is what is on the table. And we know that from the table, a less than was 0, 0.5478. And the probability that X is greater than 18.6 is 0, 0.4522. That is the probability of a less than. Looking at the between, if we need, suppose that X with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5, and we need to find the probability that X lies between 18 and 18.6. We calculate the Z value for eight uh, for 18, and we calculate the Z value for 18.6. And we can then say we have the probability that Z lies between 0, because for 18 is 0, and 0, 0,18 for 18.6. How do we find the probability on the table? Remember, we go into take 
the probability on the table from the bigger one, zero is smaller than 0, 0,12. So 0, 0,12 is the biggest one. So I'm going to take 0, 0,12, find the value on the table, subtract the value on the table for zero. So how do we do that? So we're going to first find the value of 0, 0,12. So 0, 0,12 is 0, 0,5478. And the probability that X is zero or Z is zero, Z is zero will be, go there, and zero is the same as zero comma zero zero. So we're going to find zero zero and zero at the top. And that is zero comma zero five. And we put there, and the probability of between, only between is zero comma zero four seven eight. And that's how you will find the probabilities. Are there any questions? Any confusion? Anything you wanna still wanna find? Out? Now let's recap before we go and look at the, the activities. We said the probability that Z is less than a value, it is the value you find on the table. The probability that Z is greater than a value, this one minus the value you find on the table. The probability that Z lies between two values, we're going to find the table value for B. I'm going to use table value. Table B minus table A. If you can remember this, you will be able to know how to solve normal distribution questions. Are there any questions before we move to the activities? Okay, no questions. So let's go on to the activities. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, then it means we need to go and find the probabilities. So in this instance, they didn't ask you to calculate the Z. They have given you the Z value. All you need to do is go to the table. And like I said, we need to toggle between two. I'm going to stop sharing and share again, but then share my entire screen. I have too many things open on my screen. Um, Let's hope it's not going to cause any chaos when I open the wrong thing. OK, so which one of the following statement? We can start from number two and then move on. I will come back to number one. Uh, anyway, let's start with number one because then number one is fine. So number one is asking you to find the probability at the constant. What did I say about the probability at the constant? It will always be equals to zero because we always interested in the cumulative probabilities. So this, we're looking for the incorrect one. So this will always be equals to zero. So it is correct. The probability that Z is greater than zero Do you know how you will find that? So you will find one minus the table value. And what is the table value? Is zero comma zero zero. So let's go to the table. Because now I'm doing it shortcut. If I'm not doing it shortcut, then I will be finding the probability of Z is less than 0, 0,00. So it means when you go to the table, I cannot see. I, when you go to the table, we need to look for, and it is positive. So that's the other thing you need to be aware of. This is negative side, so we need to go to the positive side. So you go to the positive side of the table and we look for zero and zero. 
and that is 0, 0,500. And that is 0, 0,500, which is the same as 0, 0,5. So that is correct. So I'm going to do exercise one for you. You will have to do the next exercise on your own. Uh, the next one, the probability that Z is less than zero because of the sign says less than zero. What did we say? Remember, less than zero, the table value. So it means we're going to just go to the table value. So uh, the table value is 0, 0,05. So we go to the table value and that is 0, 0,05. Zero. Um, okay. Then the first one, what I didn't, I forgot to 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 inform you was that one minus zero comma zero five is the same as zero comma zero five. It's my mistake, my bad. <clears throat> I should have alerted you to say I've already subtracted one from um zero comma zero five from zero. Why the reason why I put that zero comma zero five there, but that is for the probability of less than, because if you say one minus 0, 0,5 is the same as 0, 0,5. If it was another value, we would have had to subtract 0, 0,05 from one, or whatever the value from one. Number four, the probability that Z is less than minus one. So this one, we need to treat it as minus zero, minus one comma zero, zero. So it means we're going to the negative side. So you go to the negative side, you look for 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and you look for 0 at the top where they both meet. So it's the first column. The answer is 0, 0,15870. 0, 0,15870. So that is correct. Now we get to the last one. The last one says the probability that Z is greater than one is equals to one minus the probability that Z is less than or equals to minus one. So let's check that out. In a way, we know that the probability that Z is greater than one would be one minus the probability of Z less than one. That is a given. We know that that would give us the same answer, but let's find out if this gives us the same answer as this. So let's go find one minus the probability of a table one. So we need to go to one on the positive side, one comma, one, Comma. So the answer is 0, 0,8413. 0, 0,8413. And that is equals to 7. We need the calculator. I'm going to open my, my calculator from here. My normal calculator. Uh, one minus point eight four one three equals zero comma one five eight seven. Zero comma one five eight seven. That is this site. The answer for that would have been zero comma one five eight seven. So let's find out if it's the same as this, because they say it is equal. So what is the probability of Z less than or equals to negative one? We did find it there, right? We don't have to go far, which is 0, 0,1587. And that will be equals to 0, 0,84. 
one three, which this side we said it is one zero comma one five eight seven. So both of them are not the same. So the incorrect answer is number five. That's how you will answer questions in the exam or in your assignment as you receive them or find them. Are there any questions? There any comment? Nothing, nada, next. Okay, so let's look at another. This you can do on your own. You can take a screenshot and do this. I'm gonna show you one because we didn't do the, the between and then you can do the rest. So let's look at number three. I'm not saying it will be the incorrect one, but we're going to get number three only. So here we have the probability that Z lies between two values. So remember, we first need to start with the probability of Z less than a zero. So we need to go to the table value of where it is zero comma zero zero. So it's zero comma zero zero. We know that it is zero comma five. 0, 0,5000 0, 0, 0. minus, and then we need to go to the negative side and look for negative 2,80. So we go to the negative side and we look for negative 2,8 and 0 at the top, and that is 0, 0, 0, 0,0026. 0, 0,0026 and the answer would be, and that's how you will do the probability of between 0. 0.5000 0, 0, 0, minus 0. 0.0026 equals 0, 0,4974. Which is correct. So you can do the others. You can do number three, number four, and number two on your own. I just want to get to another question. So you can also do this one on your own. You can take a screenshot of it and go and play around with it because it's the same as what we just did previously. Okay, I wanna do this one. The shaded area under the following standard normal is equals to. So, now, they have given you the shaded area, then they want to know what the probability of this shaded area would be. They've given you two values, which means what is that probability? Oh, remember the Z value is the area underneath the curve is the Z value. So we know that Z lies between two values, 0 and 1,25. That's how you're going to interpret this. You can write this as, the Z value lies between 0 and 1,25. We know we start first with 1,25. So you're going to go to the table values and look for 1, comma on the positive side. You're going to go and look for 1,5, 0, and that is 9, 0, 0,9332. Oh, it's 1,25. 1,25, not 1,5. So, my bad. You also need to read the table carefully and correctly, especially your Z values, because the minute you make a mistake, you cannot get it right. So, where they both meet, 0, 0,8944. 0, 0,8944. Four, four. And then we go to zero. We've been dealing with zero. I can tell you just right now that it's 0, 0,5, zero, 0. And you just subtract one from the other. And that will give you the area in between. 0. 0.8944 minus 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 equals 
0.3944, which is option four. That's how you're going to answer questions as you get them in the exam or assignment. Okay, so the other one, there are so many of them. Okay, so this one, they are asking you to find the probability, but they're giving it to you in words. You need to be able to know how to interpret the words into, uh, into the mathematical side. What is greater than? What is less than? What is between? You need to be able to read those and write it. So you should be able to do this as well. So you need to be calculating the probability. So you will have to first calculate your Z score. X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and then go find the probability using the correct sign. The last one that I'm going to do with you is this one, which also looks as complex as the other ones. They are telling you on this one that the probability of X less than a value is 0, 0,1515. For the fact that they gave you the less than, therefore it means this value is the value they found on the table. So it's going to be easy to go and find the Z value. So we're going to use this to find the Z, the Z value. What else are we given? They're telling us that that is the area underneath the curve. So therefore, it means this is the probability, which is the area underneath the curve, which is normally distributed with the mean of 30. And here is the other catch, the variance. This is sigma squared of 16. Therefore, you need to find the standard deviation, which is the square root of 16, which is equals to 4. That's what we're going to be using to substitute. If they have given you standard deviation, it would have been five. The value taken up by this is equals to, so they are asking you to calculate the value of X. That's what they are asking you. So the probability, it means we need to find the Z value so that we can find the X value. We are given the mean, we are given the standard deviation. So let's go find the Z value that corresponds to that probability. Because it says 0, 0,1515, we need to go inside the table. It will be on the negative side. The other thing you need to always remember, on the positive side, the probabilities are big. On the negative side, the probabilities are smaller. So when the probability is smaller in the question, like 0, 0,1515, which is what we are looking for, 0, 0,1515, they could have even told us that it is 15% or 15.15%. So we will need to convert it. So we're going to go inside this table and look for 0, 0,1515, and there is 0, 0,1515, and we're going to go out, and we found minus 1,0, we need to find the last digit. And the last digit, we're going to find it at the top. So you're going to go to the top as well. Because that value is made up of two values, one on the left and one at the top. So you're going to go to the top. And when we get to the top, the last digit is three. So it's minus 0, comma, or minus 1, comma zero three. So our Z is minus one comma zero three. Our X is what we are looking for. Minus the mean is 30 divided by four. Now we're going to apply the math. Maths, we can multiply because we want to get rid of four. Multiply this side by four. Multiply that side by four. So we're going to say minus one comma zero three times four is equals to x minus thirty, and we need to get rid of minus thirty and bring it to the other side. Mathematically, it says when it moves across, it changes the sign. So we have one comma zero three times four 
plus 30 is equals to x. So our x is equal to, and we can calculate that, minus, we need to take it out of this, negative 1,03, uh, where is my negative? Multiply by 4 equals minus 4,12 plus, I must add 30 to it, equals 25.88, 25.88, and that's option. And that's how you can also use the information to solve equations. I know that you were supposed to talk today and you didn't talk to me. I feel bad, but we are at the end of the session. And are there any questions? Based on what I just showed you, you can also answer this question because it's almost, so this one, they just want you to go and find the value of Z. So based on the information that they have given you, think about it very carefully. They want the area to the right. Left. Right. The area to the left the area to the right. Think about how you're going to find that value from the area to the right. Because from the area to the left, it's the table value. From the area to the right, one minus the table value. So it means this value, they found it by looking at one minus the value that they found on the table. You, you will have to do the same as well so that you can get the correct Z value. So you will have to take this value and subtract it from one and then use the answer to go and find your z value. That's all I'm going to say. Are there any other questions? No questions. So then, then that brings us to the end of the session. Likewise, always, we from Pambili Analytics, where we're trying to bridge the gap in terms of numeracy and literacy and analytical skills. We do this by offering a range of services which you can benefit from or your company can benefit from. And our flagship skills development, we still have an offer which is expiring in two days um, of a one-on-one -on -one session. Otherwise, we're going back to the normal rate. You can also join or watch or um, sign up for the self-led online trading sessions, but especially on the data literacy and research. In order for you to gain access to the recordings, there are numerous recordings that are on there that can support your learning free of charge. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure that when you subscribe, you like our videos, share our videos and comment on our videos. Help us improve the content. Otherwise, if you want the recordings of these free sessions that we are currently offering right now. You will need to join the channel as a member. Only these three levels of membership grant you access to the recording. And this is a huge saving that you will be doing. Other than that, if you want to get hold of us, we are available in all the media platforms. You can send us an email or send us a WhatsApp. Enjoy the rest of your evening. See you Saturday. Goodbye. Thank you, Lizzie. Bye. Good night. Lizzie, bye.